Hello everybody, as uh, Yuri said, I'm uh, Ricardo Peloso from uh, the Politecnico of Torino. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, my work on mostly digital high fidelity audio reproduction systems. I'm from the VLSI lab at the Department of Electronics and Telecommunication under the supervision of a Professor Maurizio Martina. Um, so let's start talking about sound. Sound is uh, energy produced by vibrating matter. Uh, we human uh, have a, a system called uh, hearing that uh, cares about uh, both the time and frequency domains. It has uh, a limited bandwidth, only 20 kilohertz, more or less, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and uh, a very high dynamic range, from the, the smallest sound to the, to the loudest one, there are more than 120 decibels of separation. I want also to point out that uh, two high fidelity systems can be very expensive. Just the one in, uh, in the figure is a, a digital to analog converter that um, is priced uh, uh, more or less uh, $100,000. Um, let's talk about the digital audio. Uh, why digital audio? Because uh, yeah, I have a digital background at uh, VLSI. Uh, but um, uh, also because uh, nowadays uh, digital audio is uh, ubiquitous, uh, we can find it everywhere and uh, physical uh, audio signals can be easily digitized and stored or transmitted as uh, digital data. Uh, for example, uh, we can find a compact disc where uh, there is uh, an uncompressed raw audio data or uh, streaming services like uh, Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music and so on that uh, offer uh, compressed, uh, uh, compressed uh, uh, audio data. This is a typical uh, audio signal chain. Uh, the, the first part is a microphone that captures the, vibrate, the vibrating in the air. Uh, then um, uh, it uh, creates an analog waveform that is pre-amplified to match the, the, the dynamic range of uh, an analog to digital converter. Then the digital word is uh, given to a digital signal processing part where it is uh, mixed with uh, other um, streams. And the resulting uh, digital word is uh, given to a digital to, audio, uh, to analog converter that uh, recreates an analog waveform that can be amplified to match the energy requirements of a loudspeaker. Um, my work is uh, most on uh, the digital to audio converter part that is uh, the, the consumer uh, part, let's say. Uh, the, in the 1980s, uh, with the compact disc, uh, this was the first uh, solution to make a digital to analog converter. Uh, it worked at an uh, equist rate, uh, so two times uh, the bandwidth, more or less, uh, 44 uh, kilohertz, but uh, uh, with 16 bits of resolution. Uh, it uh, means that uh, the digital to analog converter uh, needed is a 16 bit one that uh, are more or less uh, 65,000 uh, uh, levels. And so this part uh, should uh, have, uh, must have the, the capability of uh, creating uh, 65,000 uh, individual uh, uh, levels of uh, tension of, uh, or current. Uh, then in the 90s, uh, revolution begins with the, uh, the so-called Delta Sigma modulator. Uh, at first, the, uh, the initial uh, NACI signal is uh, interpolated uh, to, uh, to achieve an oversampling of n times uh, 44 kilohertz. For example, here I put uh, 3 megahertz, uh, still retaining 16 bits. Then uh, a delta sigma modulator uh, uh, shrink the, the, the number of bits from 16 to 1, from 65,000 levels to only 2 so that uh, we can use the uh, one bit uh, DAC uh, with only two levels. And uh, from two levels, uh, there can be only one straight uh, 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 line. So uh, it, uh, it is very linear, this uh, solution. But uh, it, uh, it uh, has a uh, um, great amount of uh, noise outside the audio band. And so it has to be filtered out by a low pass filter. Uh, then uh, the modern solution is similar to the previous one. But now the modulator creates uh, not uh, a one bit uh, signal, but uh, uh, three, four, five uh, bits uh, once. And then a uh, scrambler converts the, the, these uh, bits to individual uh, elements. For example, two, three bits corresponds to eight elements, uh, four bits, uh, 16 elements. Uh, 
Uh, then uh, an eight element DAC that is uh, uh, eight individual uh, one uh, level um, DACs um, uh, are fed with uh, this signal and uh, uh, the analog waveform is uh, created. Uh, as before, we have uh, some um, uh, out of band noise that we have to, uh, to filter with a low pass filter. This part in red is uh, all digital, so we can uh, work on it uh, by uh, digital means uh, with uh, 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 automated uh, design tools uh, and so on. It is a very interesting part because uh, it, uh, the, the solution is uh, mostly digital and we can uh, integrate it on uh, modern uh, technological nodes. Uh, the first thing to do is uh, the oversampling. Uh, let's say we have uh, the, the blue waveform, the analog blue waveform, and we want to sample it at the Nyquist uh, uh, frequency. We, look, we obtain uh, the, the red dots. But uh, we, for the delta sigma to make its magic, we need uh, the, also the green dots. So we have to uh, recreate the green dots. This, the oversampling part uh, recreates uh, the green dots from the red ones. Then the delta sigma modulator is, uh, is uh, the part uh, depicted in the, the left of uh, the figure. Uh, it's a closed loop solution in which a quantizer uh, from one to four, five bits, uh, let's say, is embedded in a, feedback, uh, in a negative feedback structure. The, the output is actively uh, compared with the input and a digital loop filter uh, push the quantization noise created by the quantizer outside the, the audio band. Uh, and in the right part, uh, we can see the, in red the audio uh, signal, and uh, in green the quantization noise uh, created by uh, shrinking the, the, the word width from uh, uh, 16 bits to uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 bits. Then we have uh, uh, the scrambler. The scrambler, uh, also called the dynamic matching part, exploits the time domain to uh, even out the usage of uh, each element, uh, each duck, uh, individual duck. As I said before, it, uh, for, from three bits, uh, uh, we can obtain uh, eight elements. Uh, by even out uh, the, uh, the element usage, we can embed in each individual element the, the input signal and uh, help the, the linearity uh, without resorting to complex analog uh, uh, calibration and, uh, and design resources uh, to um, uh, recreate the, the input audio uh, signal. Uh, this uh, is uh, mostly done as a block external to the delta sigma modulator. So working on this topic, I found uh, these main issues. Uh, there is the need of uh, an efficient high quality interpolation system. Uh, the delta sigma is uh, difficult to stabilize, uh, in particular when uh, dealing with the one-bit quantizers, because there is a uh, high amount of uh, recirculating noise. The uh, dynamic element matching part is rather inflexible because it's uh, implemented outside the, the main uh, delta sigma loop. So there is no uh, closed loop uh, system to enforce uh, its, um, its work in principle. And then uh, sometimes there is the, the need to directly convert from amplitude to, um, to time. And uh, this is done, uh, uh, this can be done by pulse width modulation and dyadic uh, digital pulse modulation. This can be done without uh, uh, interpolation and, uh, and uh, uh, modulation uh, but in a rather straightforward way. The interpolation. The interpolation can be done in two domains, the time domain and the frequency domain. In time domain, you can sample by inserting zero elements between the available ones, and then apply a high quality linear phase filter that is long enough to to ensure the, the good uh, input response in the time domain. Uh, this, uh, I, so I worked on a novel efficient uh, long uh, uh, digital filter implementation uh, to, uh, to have uh, a better way to, to implement this filter. Then the other way is uh, in the frequency domain. 
you can uh, transform the signal uh, with the uh, uh, discrete Fourier transformer, uh, uh, pad uh, with the zeros uh, at the high frequency part, and then apply an inverse Fourier transformer. Uh, here I worked on a novel mix of discrete sine transform and discrete cosine transform to, uh, that uh, uh, gave uh, me some uh, very interesting results uh, uh, while retaining the the difficulty, the complexity, uh, like uh, similar to the to the uh, discrete Fourier transform uh, uh, type uh, interpolation. Then I worked on the on the stabilization of uh, delta sigma modulators. Uh, I found that uh, the quantizer inside the loop is made by a two nonlinear operation, uh, an unbounded quantization and a saturation operator. I, I saw that uh, the instability stems only from the saturation part. And um, so I uh, split the two and I used uh, an aggressive noise shaping only on the unbounded quantization operator. And then uh, the excess noise, um, I, on, uh, I worked on the excess noise uh, using an highly stable uh, noise shaping uh, only on the saturation part. Then I, I worked to, um, to put uh, the dynamic element matching uh, uh, part in the, in the delta sigma modulator. You can see one example in, uh, in the figure. Uh, the output of the of the of this system is a shift register like output uh, when uh, many one bit ducks are summed to to obtain the final result the same uh, uh, the same uh, summation is given back to a global loop filter uh, that feed the, the um, uh, pulse width modulation uh, part uh, a delta sigma uh, uh, pulse width modulator uh, so the, this closed loop uh, gives us a uh, high um, uh, quality multi-level uh, um, result. Um, another uh, circuit I, uh, I work on uh, is uh, given by a, a sum of multiple one-bit delta sigma modulators in parallel, one with uh, different characteristics uh, that, is that are orchestrated by a global uh, modulation um, uh, loop a global loop that ensures that uh, the, the, the sum of uh, them uh, works as a, a, um, a multi-level uh, delta sigma modulator. Then uh, finally, I worked on um, the amplitude to time uh, uh, amplitude to time circuit. The DDPM, the dyadic digital post modulation, is a is a method uh, developed by uh, Paolo Cavetti in, uh, at the DET of uh, Polytechnic of Torino. Uh, I, um, I put this work with, uh, some, uh, with a multi-level delta sigma modulator and uh, an FIR DAC uh, like in the circuit in the slide before. And uh, um, I saw that uh, uh, the, the FIR DAC uh, works uh, by uh, by uh, compensating much of uh, the uh, noise uh, created by the DDPM modulator. And um, uh, the DDPM is uh, very good uh, when, when uh, in conjunction with multi-level delta sigmas. Uh, so the results is a, a system with a low out of band uh, total noise. So uh, we need a small uh, analog filters to filter out the high frequency noise. And uh, it is a low power uh, system due to the simplicity of the DPM and the uh, FIR DAC. And it, is, it, is, um, uh, it can be uh, imported to, uh, to modern digital uh, 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 fabrication processes uh, where the analog part is rather sloppy and can be, can be improved uh, so much uh, by, uh, by design. Thank you for uh, your attention. If you have a um, uh, question, I'm here for you. Okay. Thank you, Ricardo, for your talk. It's uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm, I am, I'm asking to all the people who is watching the event to write the questions on the, on the YouTube video. If you are inside the call, you can write directly in the chat or uh, activate your microphone and just talk. 
Uh, in the meantime, I just uh, pose you pose some questions that are already here. The first one from one of uh, our IEEE member is, does the scrambler randomly select the elements or can it also work periodically? Uh, the, um, the scrambler works, there are some different types of scramblers. The easiest one randomly scramble them, but uh, the most interesting ones have a noise shaping capability. So each element has its own uh, delta sigma parts, let's say, but uh, it's, uh, they are designed not uh, as delta sigma loops, but okay. uh, uh, in other, uh, other ways. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, there is a second question concerning the DEM in the loop approach. How difficult it is to yeah. guarantee stability of the global loop? Uh, the stability of the global loop uh, is uh, done by design and simulation. A uh, very problematic part in delta stigmas uh, is that uh, the, there is uh, the, the problem of the stability and uh, you have to ensure it uh, by uh, design. So uh, make extensive simulation of uh, the circuit and uh, you can, um, uh, but you can apply, uh, for example, the, um, the other, uh, stabilization technique I proposed uh, because it's, um, it's uh, all the, the techniques I proposed are orthogonal to each other. So they can be implemented in uh, all in the same uh, parts, in the same loop, uh, in the same system, let's say. Okay, thank you very much. I think there are no other questions. No on YouTube, okay. I so have maybe a question, have... if it is possible. I okay. have a question. Yes, please. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Just a, a curiosity about this type of project. Has been already uh, implemented on some boards and some FPGAs or something like that. Uh, uh, so there is an experimental part for, the, uh, for, uh, for this type of project at uh, the current state of the art. Uh, yeah, thank I... you, Ricardo. I have uh, here a board that uh, I just received uh, uh, yesterday to populate uh, uh, with the uh, components. It uh, has nice. to be attached to an FPGA, uh, in, uh, in particular uh, uh, the one uh, SOC dev board, development board uh, with an Altera one. And uh, we already tried with uh, some um, uh, breadboard, but, uh, but uh, we need now uh, some uh, serious uh, design to, to, to try it and uh, measure the uh, uh, power consumption and uh, performances. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you very much.